This is the Tuesday devotion from Melrose Mountain, Higher Ground. And the reason I'm making it on Monday afternoon is because we've got a very busy schedule tomorrow and uh, may not have an opportunity to get it all done. So uh, we're looking at Mark chapter 14 and the preparation for the Passover. Uh, we've been leading up to this for quite some time. And uh, you, we might think that that's a long time <laughs> that we've been leading into the Passover, but in fact, the Jews have been waiting 1,500 years for that shadowy picture of the Lord's Supper uh, in the Passover. Uh, and the Passover that is found in the book of Exodus is uh, now going to come in clear focus as Jesus becomes the Passover lamb the sacrifice that would redeem the people of God. And what a wonderful celebration. We would no longer know it as the Passover. We would know it as the Lord's Supper. And we would know that it was his body that was broken for us. It was his piercing that uh, saved us from our sins. And it is by his stripes that we're healed. And so we see this Passover celebration being prepared for. It's very interesting. It's only a couple of verses. Uh, but Jesus sends uh, just two of his disciples, which we find as we read all of the different gospel accounts of this particular event, uh, is uh, Peter and John that are sent into city. And they're told to watch for a man carrying a pitcher of water. You might not think that that's very significant. Uh, however, a man normally wasn't carrying a pitcher of water. He might be carrying a wine skin or a skin of water, uh, but most of the time the water was borne by the women coming from the well. And so it would be an unusual sight to see a man carrying water. They followed him to the place and asked him for a place for his master uh, to have the Passover. And as is always the case, the room was already in readiness. It says they followed them. They went to the upper room and there's the room all ready, completely ready for the event. You see, when Jesus needed a boat, there was a boat available. When Jesus needed a donkey, there was a donkey available. When Jesus needed a room for the Passover, the room was already there. When Jesus needed a tomb, it was already prepared. And when Jesus needs a throne, it was there. He is a ruler and the reign over this whole world. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And everything's already ready. He's told us what to expect. He's told us that everything's in readiness. The stage is set. The places are already set. The people are in place. And everything that he promised is going to be done just as he said. But that's exactly what the disciples found on the first day of the first month, which Exodus chapter 11 had told us already in advance would be the first month of the calendar of the Hebrew. On that day when the lamb was to be slain, Jesus became our Passover lamb, our perfect sacrifice for our sins. He fulfilled everything that was foretold more than 1500 years before. And just as he told us, he sits at the right hand of the Father, the throne already prepared for him. And one day all of his enemy will be his footstool. And one day we'll be his people. We'll sit before him. We'll worship him as the savior of our lives. And so I hope today as you think about the Passover meal, you remember that the Lord's Supper is the fulfillment of that promise made so far ahead of time. And that just as surely as that upper room was prepared for Jesus, for that last Passover that he would celebrate here on earth, so is there a place prepared in heaven for him and for us, so that we might sit down at the table together with him. And do it anew and afresh with him. That's your thought for the day. God bless you. Have a great day.